So who could have ever predicted that an anti-capitalist business would go out of business? Well, apparently that's what's happened right here. Here's the headline from Zero Hedge. Toronto anti-capitalist pay-when-you-can cafe shuts down after just one year. You know, I can't help but feel like it could have been anticipated that this uh, anti-capitalist cafe's communist clientele it probably wasn't going to pay for anything. Let's see. It says the anarchist describes itself as an anti-capitalist, anti-colonial cafe, shop, and radical community space on stolen land. You know, this drives me nuts, okay? If it's on stolen land, then get off. I mean, if it bothers you that much, you could just leave the stolen land, right? It's always the same with these people, with the land acknowledgements and the anti-colonialists and the stolen land. They seem fine. Staying on the land. You'd think it would bother them a little bit more than it does. Anyway, let's watch this little video that's uh, promoting the anarchist. And by the way, they're not anarchists. They're communists, all right? They're always communists. Anyway. The Anarchist is a worker-owned, anti-capitalist, anti-colonial cafe, shop, and community space. Gabriel opened the space after leaving Vancouver due to its unwelcoming sense of classism. Though he never felt comfortable working in a coffee shop in BC, he knew if he were to have one of his own, it would have to adopt the values that occupy such a huge part of his life. A place devoted to radical leftist politics, revolution, ending capitalism, improving the world's economic system that benefits everyone and not just elites, and most importantly, sparking conversations that will help implement these ideas. Other than delicious coffee, which Gabriel is most definitely an expert expert in, the shop has a rich selection of progressive political books that he's selling at wholesale prices. I was happy to try some great light roast espresso here. I even tried my first espresso tonic, which is something of a micro-revolution in itself. I highly recommend paying a visit to Gabriel at 190 Jarvis Street, if not for great coffee, for even greater conversation. Seems awful bourgeois for an anarchist cafe, doesn't it? And apparently it's really expensive too. Everything, if you do pay, it's really expensive. So, I mean, you've just got this fancy commie cafe, because commies actually do still like nice stuff. Although I'm sure the coffee and the food and everything was actually probably just awful. It was probably all you know, beyond next level vegan, plus, you know, made out of 50% shredded Chinese newspapers. But aren't these places always just somewhere to pose, to be a poser, to sit there with your little red book or your copy of Capital? But in any case, uh, yeah, this didn't work out. It lasted one year says, unfortunately, the lack of generational wealth, seed capital from ethically bankrupt sources left me unable to weather the quiet winter season or to grow in the ways needed to be sustainable longer term. The owner, Gabriel Sims Fewer, wrote last week, yeah, it was that lack of generational wealth and seed capital from the ethically bankrupt sources that was the problem, not the fact that it was an anarchist cafe. <laughs> Well, here's a quote from Breitbart. It says, uh, The Anarchist, which opened for business in March of 2022, went viral last year with internet users mocking the leftist cafe for charging high prices for its specialty coffee, as well as selling radical art, books, clothing, jewelry, tote bags, and stickers, just like good anti-capitalists. So I guess the combination of high prices and then just telling people they could pay whenever, it's a bad business model, I guess. Let's see, quote, uh, fuck the rich, fuck the police, fuck the state, fuck the colonial death camp we call Canada. Again, you know what? You could leave. If it's that bad, why try and open a coffee shop on it? You'd think they'd be the last thing you want to do. And you know, if this was the general attitude of the place, it's a bit of a downer, right? I'm not surprised that the freeloaders were the only people who didn't stay away. Let's end it off with this cheery note. Uh, quote, it's been an amazing experience connecting with so many great community members, sparking desperately needed debate, raising the blood pressure of conservatives, that includes you and narco-capitalists and libertarians, fulfilling the dream of most service workers by not having to tolerate the presence of professional class traders, uh, pigs and military, and experimenting with living and working in ways that don't enthusiastically embrace the pure misanthropy of capitalism, he continued. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go out on a limb here and just suggest this place was doomed from the start. I don't think that that is the dream of most service workers, to not be around the police or military. Yeah, that's just way more of a degenerate communist thing. And if you want misanthropy, uh, capitalism isn't exactly the first place you'd look. Try communism. Although if you lived in a communist society, uh, this whole cafe experience... Uh, wouldn't have happened in the first place.
he would have been far too busy at the concrete factory. Anyway, please subscribe, like, and share. Sharing really helps me out. I thank you for that. I will see you next time.